2nd of March 1942. U-552 has been assigned back out to the North Atlantic, this time to sector CE-1 to CE-5. The patrol will consist of travelling at least 2,000 kilometres inside the designated area, and we are expected to sink a minimum of 4,000 tonnes of enemy trade shipping. Weather in the air is expected to be calm. And intelligence anticipates the number of vessels in the area to be at large. Any tonnage sunk will help towards the Black Pit campaign, and with its completion, we will be rewarded with a milk cow, which will enable U-552 to travel across the North Atlantic and to attack the coast of America. Before we can get there, the Red Devils have a lot of tonnage to sink, but we can make a start today and try and get at least the Tier 2 in the Black Pit campaign complete. Hi everyone, right, we've just made it to our patrol zone. We're just starting our patrol now. 9th of March, just coming up to 20 to midnight. As you can see, it's dark and uh, it's a little bit choppy. Uh, we, we have been assured that the weather should be calm while we're out here for our patrol, but um, yeah, maybe we've made a bit too much uh, good ground and uh, they weren't expecting us here quite so soon. But we're here, we're on patrol, and uh, yeah, we'll get these miles or these 2,000 meters um, completed and then we'll go. Well, if you don't find anything here, we'll go slightly further north, is where the Black Pit main campaign area is. Uh, but yeah, if we can get that to tier 2 today, that would be very good because, yeah. Operation Drumbeat has been opened, and it would be nice to go over there to uh, attack the coastal regions of America while they're lightly defended. But to do that, we will need a milk cow to um, refuel us and uh, replenish us halfway along, or at least on the way back. Uh, so, yeah, that's uh, that's the the plan. If we can complete um, the Black Pit, all three tiers of the campaign we will be gifted a milk cow to be able to um, designate where we want it to be positioned best for us before we can head out and complete the missions over on the Americas that's obviously the goal um, so that is our thinking behind this so we're trying to go maximize the tonnage that we sink today the first tier we've completed which is 50,000 tons we're currently at 63,000 tons uh, tier 2 completes at 100,000 tons, so if we can get 40,000 tons or more um, then that should see us into the tier 3 and I'm guessing it's going to go up to 150,000 tons, so yeah if we can get 90,000 tons we might be able to do tiers 2 and 3, but um, that's 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 a big ask, so let's just see what we can do today and uh, we'll be very keen to maximise our tonnage Welcome back everyone, right, a bit of time has passed, it's now the 24th of March, we've been out here uh, hunting with nothing being seen, and despite they said there's going to be large numbers of vessels, that is our first smoke on the horizon, right there. About to be covered up with the, uh, the radar now. There you go, smoke on the horizon. That's our first one in, what, two weeks? Something like that? No, when have we got the ninth out here? So, um, yeah, almost two weeks. Been out on patrol, but um, we found them, finally. So, uh, we're going to inspect whatever this contact is. It looks like a red flag. It looks like a merchant. Possibly a Liberty. I can see one, two, three stacks of um, crane stroke masts. So yeah, that may well be a Liberty style uh, freighter. So we'll um, set up an ambush and see if we can get her on her own. She seems to be on her own. No further smoke signals seen. Apart from old Klaus there having a smoke. Yeah, no escorts. She's on her own. The sun's coming up. So, uh, yeah, let's set up and try and get our first kill of this patrol. Okay, we've submerged the boat. Periscope up. Let's have a look. There she is. It does indeed appear to be a Liberty freighter, I believe. Let's get UK up. It's not a coastal. It's not a fishing boat. It's... Two masts at the front, it's a Liberty. Recognise that. So displacement's about 7,000 tonnes, so it's not a bad start. Uh, it's a bit far away. 
and uh, it's probably doing seven knots but let's throw that in it's 10 kilometers away at the moment so we'll let it come a little bit closer see if we need to move ourselves a little bit closer to set up a better ambush attack solution um, but yes we've got our first target in sight okay a bit of time has passed now let's do, do a speed check probably going to be seven knots but single ships on their own sometimes they do uh, you know go a little bit quicker because speed is sometimes their best defense which you can understand that certainly yeah got the bright sunshine right in the eyes of the lookouts as well so they probably won't spot our periscope popping up above the water see the, the waves definitely calmed down from that storm when we first arrived in our sort of patrol area 8 knots, well there we go um, also worth reporting as we've been underwater the hydrophone operator has spotted 3900 meters uh, has spotted another group of contacts um, to our 260 heading um, so you know, sort of behind us and to our port side uh, heading towards the UK it looks like a convoy of about 10 or more ships so that's definitely something we'll check out after we've finished with our friend here um, so we think she's doing at 8 knots we haven't calculated that yet um, 4000 meters is roughly the solution um, course let's set her going about I'd say probably Uh, about there, one one two seven. Okay, we're nearing the time of perfect firing solution. So, uh, what have we got in the tubes? We've got a T three in tube one, a T three, T three, and a T three. What's T threes all around? So tube one flood. Um, what's the depth of one of these Liberty freighters? It is uh, seven point two meters. So let's go magnetic because it's quite calm. Yeah, 7.5 any time now tube one fire I'm going to try and be sparing with the shots uh, because as I said we're trying to get as maximum tonnage so if we can hit this damage it it's certainly deck gun weather to enjoy And look, they've got, they got, they do have a deck gun on the back, but you know, if they're fighting fires and uh, abandoning ship, then you know, we should be okay. I think it's missed. Right, load tube two then. Can't believe that's missed. Let's redo the uh, distance. Yeah, I know it was a desk. 2400. Right, tube 2, we'll fire on the surface. Oh no, should we go magnetic? No, let's just fire on the surface. Oh no, fire magnetic, go. Can't believe all that talk about being frugal with the torpedoes, and we've uh, we missed. It's sailed behind, so it must be going faster than we calculate. All our calculations were off. I think what it was, uh, this had was stuck on seven knots while well, this one was on eight knots so I put them both to eight knots and I'm hoping that was the uh, the minor correction uh, this torpedo should be nearing the ship now there we go that's a bit what it was it was the slight discrepancy between the two speed settings on the uh, on the dials right okay Let's see how bad that fire is going to get. Don't want to use another torpedo, honestly. Two is probably what we'd have fired at a, a, a Liberty Freighter anyway. The damage is uh, going. The fires are blazing. Flyers breaking out around the funnel now, which is bothers good to see. But it's kind of just um, been sorted out. But you can see it's definitely starting to list towards us. Chance a bit more height. 
All oh, the fires are kind of looking under control, aren't they? We'll give her a bit of time. And if necessary, we'll pop up with a deck gun. They do have a, a gun on the rear, but hopefully we can uh, do enough damage to get them to abandon ship before they man that. Okay, we've surfaced. Now we've got some armor piercing. That's all we've got back at base by looks of it. We've got some fires on the front still. Let's send some shells in. Yeah, their deck gun is not usable, which is good to see. Right on the waterline, perfect. Let's get some... Um, oh, that's a bit low, that one. Get some shots into their waterline, try and get her sinking. Also a couple of shots around the funnel. Let's see if we can get the fires really racing on there. In the, uh, there we go, there was the trough. Put oh, beautiful. That's what I want to do. Get the funnel blazing, got the hot air coming out of the uh, and the fumes coming out of there. Once that goes up, they're in trouble. Trying to get some holes along the waterline as well. Oh, that was a bit low. Trying to judge the, uh, the ebb and flow of the waves. Right, let's um, just knock it down a touch. The fires are really building. There goes a the life raft. And there goes... Oh, there goes a mast. Now we know the torpedo hit here, so there should be huge holes there. So let's get some holes towards the rear. Oh, it's difficult to slow right down. In fact, I think they're stopping, so let's stop as well. Are they dead? I don't see any life rafts. She looks to have, looks to be dead in the water, though. Try and get a couple more hits in. Ah, that, they've abandoned ship. Good. So hopefully she's going to sink. Um, but we do have we do have um, some ships to catch up. So we'll, um, we'll try and speed the process along. And there she goes. She's going up. Oh, something's really caught a light now. There we go. Well, that's our minimum tonnage completed of the 4,000 tons. Wonderful. Oh, bit of a frustration that we lost that first torpedo due to a slight glitch in our calculations well a misconfiguration between the two systems which caused the glitch uh, so we'll slow the deck gun and we'll offer some support to the the people uh, I did see a comment saying oh how can I offer um, food and stuff to the survivors when I don't have any more in my hold well um, Two, work, two, two ways. You can probably loot food from a ship that is sunk, which uh, some of these boxes up here may have food in it. Or any ship you sink, you may be able to um, salvage some food from their hold. Um, the other alternative is that you turn on uh, more detailed crew management, which will allow you to purchase food from the port. Um, but there's your options. I read that in a comment. I thought I'd better just clarify that. Right, stow the deck gun and let's go and help these survivors out. Hi everyone. Right, if I bring up the periscope very gently, it's miserable weather uh, which is aiding us. Do you remember when we were told it's going to be lovely weather? Yeah, don't believe a word of it. Now, it's good and bad. The, the good stuff is that the enemy can't see us. The bad stuff is that we can't see the enemy either. Look, there's a ship there. Uh, however, we do have the hydrophone, so that is something that's something we're going to have to rely on for this attack. Uh, so here we are. This is a, an outlaying ship. And we got... That looks quite a large ship there, doesn't it? Hmm. Uh, but this is the ship we're going to concentrate on here. We don't know what it is. Um, we can probably tell... Well, we can zoom in to cheat if we want to. 
but we can sort of say it's probably about 123 meters or 100 and 118 meters uh, and we can bring our stopwatch up and if we got a pointer we can just make out the front of the ship there right once the ship gets to there we're going to do 3 minutes 15 measure the distance and then uh, we will have her speed Okay, we're coming to the uh, 3.15 mark now. There we go. Right. Lovely. Uh, measure that. 0.8 to 0.B is 733 metres. So, um, I, I forgot it's actually broken down by 1 minute, 2 minutes, 5 minutes, 4 minutes. Um, so... Yeah, actually, if you do three three minutes, three minutes fifteen, uh, you should have the knottage there, shouldn't you? So it's was it seven hundred and thirty-three? Was it? I've lost the first dot. Uh, so if it's if it's seven point seven hundred fifty meters, it'll be seven point five knots. That's how it works out. So we're looking at about seven point three knots, almost eight knots. So, well, not almost eight knots. The hell's going on here? That's dropped down. So, if we put 7.5 as the speed, distance we can do on the hydrophone. Is just under three three thousand km uh, three thousand meters, and the course is angling away from us. So we can also do that on the hydrophone, of course. Um, using this tool we can get a rough angle of her which is about 131 degrees so that will be to the red 131 so she's gone past us to be honest let's get tube 1 flooded T1 send that on the surface because it's very choppy um, is this all calculated? No, it hasn't. So there'll be 131. There we go. This is 3,000 meters and about there. Right, tube one, fire. Off into the unknown it goes. Now there's some other ships around here, but um, we're probably not going to be able to see them. Unfortunately, it's another miss. Unsurprising with the lack of uh, decent information that we had. But that does look like a C3 freighter. I uh, can't uh, see anything. Oh, yes, I can. Can you see that? That, that is recognise it as a cruiser. Yes, that is. I'll tell you what that is. That is a, another um, county class. The three, the three turrets are... Sorry, the three funnels are instantly recognizable um, speed we can probably do that actually because I can just make out the silhouette of this ship now this is not one that is going to count towards our tonnage that we need for the Black Sea and considering uh, how I gave the big speech about being careful with the torpedoes and making sure that we make maximize our tonnage going for a cruiser is not really on the uh, the high priority list but it is a cruiser and um, I think we've got a duty to try and sink all capital ships so if there's a cruiser here there's most likely going to be mostly escorts I should imagine there seem, does seem to be a lack of um, real merchant shipping when there's a, a heavy ship around they tend to be just support vessels there we go seven knots Excellent distance. This is really hard to get. Uh, probably about there. 800 meters. She's close. Okay then. Um, three torpedoes, I reckon. 
What's the length of one of these? 180 meters. There we go, right. I'll narrow that down though. Uh, choose one, two, and three. Fire. Right, now we'll make a 90 degrees turn and we'll try and get out of here and dive down. So now I'm pinging, I'm just kind of hanging on to see if these torpedoes strike home. You can see the silhouette of the cruiser now. You have to get really close to be able to see anything in this smog. One hit. Two hits. Three hits. Right. Dive. Hopefully that's enough. I can see fires. There, let's um let's go. In fact, crash dive. The call, that's the bomb and depth charges in the water. You can hear them exploding behind us. We are still diving down. So we turned, well, just over 90 degrees, probably about 100 degrees starboard from our position. We're moving away, diving down, and you can hear they're probably depth charging where they perceive where we actually loosed the torpedoes from. Um, we've got ships coming up from sort of that angle coming across there. We're just trying to not get in their path and uh, with all these depth charges going down which are not in our location that should scramble their uh, sonar anyway so we've got a bit of chance to get deeper. They're really swarming us at the moment. One's going just in front of us. We've actually hit reverse. You can see we hit reverse and we're moving backwards because we'd have just strayed straight into a depth charge path and you can hear them right in our nose torpedo's been warmed up Ooh. ok we've got to be careful these ones don't snag us Things off, I think. Okay, we're just going past 160 meters or bobbing back. Yeah, depth charge running straight past us in our front. Thankfully, we um, oh, we're actually at stop. I don't know why that's still showing reverse. We're actually at stop. Um, yeah, we're at stop, doing zero knots. That's kind of maybe damaged or got stuck somehow. But yeah, right. Where are they? Where are they? Have a listen. Pinpoint where they are. Where are they coming from? I know, I know. We just need to find out where they are and we'll ping them. Well, we won't ping them. We'll, um, we'll dodge them. Welcome back, everyone. A bit of time has passed. Here we are. We're heading south. And you can see these are all the well, the rest of the convoy there. These are the warships which are trying to find us. We've kind of slipped away. They're all searching around here. We managed to slip down 
uh, south of them. Uh, and we'll continue on. Now, um, with the the actual makeup of that convoy, there was only one or two merchant ships. Yes, there was a nice juicy C3 freighter there, which would have been quite nice. But of all those corvettes and destroyers, it's probably... There are easier kills uh, out here on the ocean, so maybe we should use our torpedoes for them. Um, so we're going to let these guys go and try and find uh, a better use for our target, uh, so for our torpedoes, sorry, and, uh, and try and maximise with the ones we have left and the fuel that we have left uh, to try and maximise our merchant tonnage. I know I've just said that and we used three torpedoes on a heavy cruiser warship, but, you know, the, the basic mission parameters have been completed with that 4,000 ton ship we sunk earlier, um, that Liberty. Well, it, it's probably more than 4,000 tons, to be fair, but, um, yeah, to get a cruiser is always a is always a nice thing. So, um, yeah, now we'll try and go back on to our, our initial priority of sinking merchant tonnage, but these are mostly warships, so we'll try and avoid them and try and easier pickings further on. Hi everyone, right, as we've been sailing away from that we've been able to surface and we've found a lone Swedish ship. Um, so it's definitely inspection time. The Gertrude Brat. Alright, let's get uh, an inspection underway. This freighter is unarmed and seems not to be escorted and flies a neutral flag. The prize rules allow us to sink such ships if we are certain they are heading towards an enemy port. If we lack such certainty, ideally we should investigate what it's carrying and verify its destination by performing an inspection. Yes, let's send a delegation. Um, should we send the captain because he's got navigation, hasn't he? Send the captain. Uh, what else have we got? Handyman. Also, no, what's that one? Merchant. Let's send Jurgen. And we'll send uh, an, any of these guys. Got anything useful? Navigator. Is that what the skipper had? Yeah, we'll send Navigator as well. Brilliant. Six bods on the dinghy, all aboard the Gertrude Brat. There you go. You should be able to see the little dinghy going across any time soon. No. Stealthily under the cover of darkness, clearly. And here we are. We climb aboard the deck and the crew faces cold welcome from the cargo ship's crew. What do you want? Asked the captain in German without exchanging any pleasantries. This is neutral ship and you shouldn't be here. Well, we'll be the judge of that, shall we? Ask the captain for the shipping documents. According to the documents, the ship is heading for the port of Liverpool, which is an enemy port, which means we can sink you, and is carrying food. It seems that this ship is uh, trading with a blockaded allied port and is a fair prize for you to sink. Except, <laughs> we confirm this freighter is involved in military activities. We can sink it without risk of international incident. Order the evacuation. You tell the captain that your orders oblige you to sink this freighter and that they must evacuate it immediately. The captain isn't very happy about the outcome, but clearly accepted that there's nothing you can do to avoid this from happening. He doesn't respond to you, but instead uh, starts shouting out to his crew to organise evacuation of the freighter. Now, what I didn't bring uh, was an engineer who could rig the ship to blow, so we will get on the deck gun and blow out of the water. Right, let's return to the ship. Right then, manning the deck gun. There is the Gertrude. So this would be a good ship once it sinks uh, to go and try and loot some of the thing, uh, the floating flotsam and jetsam. We should be able to get some uh, food. Some shots into the hull. Watch yourselves, boys. That'll be an international incident right there. Some fires going from the funnel would be nice. No, doesn't seem to be having much fun. Let's try and get some more waterline shots then. All mostly on the waterline. Haven't got a nice fire going around the funnel area as well. Beautiful. 
Send a shot in to try and... Ah, oh, there we go. That might be the end of her. We'll save the ammo. If need be. At least the uh, the crew's nice and warm for the moment. There we go. I think that's the end of the Gertrude. The Swedish blockade runner. She's gone. So the dead gun. So as the smoke clears, uh, we've already got uh, a full list of uh, people we've rescued from the other boats. Uh, she doesn't seem to have dropped any cargo. Depending on the depth here, this is North Atlantic, it might be quite deep. 2,700 metres, yeah, we're not going to send a diver down. But there we go, another ship safely um, dispatched. Yes, an enemy smuggling ship at that, which is always nice to finish off. Right, we're going to continue on. We've got limited fuel. But while we've got fuel, we'll continue to be out here. It could be the case that we need to um, get some more fuel and come back out here while we've still got the torpedoes. But let's see what we can find in the meantime. Hi everyone, right, we've found another convoy. Unfortunately we're having a little bit of trouble keeping our depth. We've got the engineer on it now, just trying to hold us in a position where they're not going to spot us. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a bit choppy. Well, that fine, everything we were told by um, intelligence was wrong, wasn't it? For weather was going to be fine, lots of ships in the area. Well, we finally found some more. It's been a tough old time. Right, we've got a destroyer there, not interested in that. Uh, we've got a couple of destroyers behind us. We've got another smoke. Um, guards can't see. We've got something there. Um, oh, we haven't had much luck with the weather, have we? Wait, wait, wait. Is that another? That's not another cruiser. Three, three. Oh, that is. It's another heavy cruiser. Unbelievable. Um, we're not going to go for that one because we've got some merchant ships back here. Um, behind us, we've got what I believe is that the closest one. It's a couple of escort ships. Yeah, okay. Right, let's try and find some of this ship. That, uh, that's, that's Here we go. Here's a ship here. <laughs> it's. Oh, I can't see. There we go. It looks like a. Um, civilian. It's a Norwegian. Um, it's not a coaster. Empire Bell, no. There you go. Empire Tower, recognize. Probably seven knots. I've got next to no hope in hell of trying to guess this, but we'll do a quick, uh, a quick run. When think about it, we should probably be trying to target the uh, the bigger ships here. I think there's at least a, a Liberty or a C3 here. That's got to be our primary. Oh, God. I should just say seven knots. Take a st wild stab in the dark. All right, it's about... Oh, hang on. Uh, about there. Seven knots, yeah, perfect. Range and stuff will do well the hydrophone. Fire. Tube 108. Right. We've got another couple of ships here. Uh, we've got a nice... What's the, the, that's probably... Is that a Swedish one? It is. Okay. Maybe we'll target this one here then. Uh, this one's a tanker. Um... See tankers. Is it not? Oh, no, I don't think it is. Could be a Dale class. Um, 146 meters. Was it 146 meters? Yeah, 146. Right. So we do down to there. Get two torpedoes away at this one. Row 2, bewässern. Row 3, bewässern. Fire. Right. 
torpedoes away. Um, maybe this one here. That looks like a Empire something or other. Um, where is it? Hang on. Empire. Empire Tower, I think. No. Empire Belt. Seven knots. Distance. Do on the hydrophone. We're just guessing at this. Interestingly, this one is showing up as red on the um, hydrophone. So we're going to recognize that as an enemy. <laughs> just say it was a bit choppy, so we didn't see it. It's, um... Come on. Somewhere about there. So, tube four. Come on. Fire. All right, torpedoes away. How are we looking? Welcome back everyone. Right, we're diving down now to 150 odd meters. Um, partial success. We've got hits on the oil tanker. That has gone down. We've got hits on the Swedish ship. That has gone down. But the Norwegian ship, um, unfortunately we didn't quite time their torpedo strike quite right. So she had time to slow down and the torpedo whistled in front of the uh, the bow. So... Okay, we got we got the big ship, which was the main one. Uh, we got the Swedish ship, which may cause a bit of issues, but um, it did say that it was an enemy ship, probably carrying smuggled goods to Liverpool again. Um, now we've got all the attention of the escort ships, of course. So uh, yeah, down, deep, quiet, and slow moving, and hopefully we can slip away from them. And on return to a hero's welcome, Hermann von Danningberg, our captain, has received the Knight's Cross with oak leaves and cross swords. Cross swords on the Knight's Cross are the next addition to the Knight's Cross meant for recipients of oak leaves. It's a very respectable decoration and only a few Kriegsmarine officers receive it. Yes, we decided to head back to port as fuel was dangerously low and we only had two forward torpedoes left, so decision was made to... Uh, Return while we can. We'll do, we'll take the fight to another day. So if we have a look at the makeup of the points, obviously completed the assignment was a point. Um, this is what gets the the um, the glory. Plus thirty was determine the torpedo of the Suffolk cruiser and sinking of the Suffolk cruiser. Of course, the um, the Suffolk HMS Suffolk was one of the uh, heavy cruisers that trailed the Bismarck for the uh, for the battleships to get in front and. Um, and uh, uh, and ultimately um, bring her to her end. But um, yeah, the Suffolk was one of the um, two cruisers that tailed the Bismarck and Prince Eugen with their radar. So yes, we've uh, revenged a little bit of uh, for the cruise of the uh, the Bismarck there. HMS Suffolk being sent to the bottom. So in the record, the Empire was sunk. The Empire record was sunk. Sorry. <laughs> Through me, then. That's the name of the ship, Empire Record. Uh, our intel tells us that this ship had a registered tonnage of 7,271 tons, was transporting utilities from Halifax to Liverpool. It was registered in the United Kingdom. That was the Liberty ship, of course. Uh, then the Gertrude Brat was the Swedish ship, 
who was smuggling. The ship was registered in Sweden, but was carrying food to Sydney to Liverpool. Gross registered tonnage of 6,287 tons. The um, Algero was sunk. The ship was registered in Sweden, was carrying food from Liv Halifax to Liverpool. That's why it was showing red. Gross registered tonnage was 4,200 tons. And the Broomdale was sunk. Intel tells us that this ship had a gross registered tonnage of 11,147 tonnes, was transporting oil from Halifax to Liverpool, registered in the United Kingdom. Boom. So it's not quite the, uh, the tally that we wanted. 28,875 tonnes, 35 days, 14 hours at sea. That was a long patrol for, for us. Um, it shows how slim pickings there was in the patrol zone, even though it said there was going to be a high... Uh, number of vessels but there wasn't so um we sunk the empire record liberty ship then the hms suffolk the county class cruiser was sunk and we got obviously quite a good reputation boost for that two swedish ships sunk because they were caught doing illegal activity so prize rules said we could do that and the oil tanker broomdale was sunk so reached the patrol zone sunk um 4000 tons of enemy uh, trade ships complete and also we travel the distance required so we didn't quite get where we wanted to with the uh the the um the black pits campaign progression but uh hopefully we can do that or maybe if we could sneak across the channel and get um the first operation drumbeat completed we would get a milk cow then but I, that's really touch and go if we can make it i don't think we'd make it back to be fair um and then we'll be just you know stuck for the enemy aircraft and enemy ships to just sink us so we do need to get a milk cow in position to allow us to resupply it shows up potentially these are milk cows but they're not uh, we need to get one so that's that's the things we're thinking and working towards at the moment um so we'll probably go to the black pit again desperate to try and get that milk cow and you can see why i keep going back out there it's not because i particularly enjoy it it's because i we've got a strategic goal to try and get the milk cows to get a resupply so we can head over to America to do Operation Drumbeat. So we'll continue with that progress next time. Thank you ever so much for watching. Take care. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.